womp womp. There you see it. There it is. The Orioles not advancing past the Yankees in the ALDS. Not entirely surprising, given the couple of key injuries the Orioles had, and given that the Yankees were the best team in the American League, having won uh, 100 games, they went on to uh, lose to the Dodgers in the World Series. Were the Dodgers in the World Series last year, too? No, they made it to the AL or NLCS, and then year before that, okay, they didn't make it that far. All right, they haven't done consecutive World Series, but they they won it in twenty one, I believe. Yeah, so this is their. Did they win it in twenty two? Okay, so it's their second World Series win in my sim, third or fourth World Series appearance. Um, just to quickly go over how the series went again, you know, I think two really key things were. Uh, the injury to Dylan Carlson, my MVP candidate, who actually he still, even though he missed last like three weeks of the season, he came in third in the AL MVP, as well as the injury to my best reliever, uh, Luke Little, you know, in the in the playoffs, especially having a multi-inning dominant reliever is pretty good. So game one was a disaster. Uh, lost nine to one. Severino shut us down. Torres, or I'm sorry, Lacey gave up a two-run homer in the first and then was doing all right. Those were the only base runners he allowed. He gave up a base hit and then a home run the first, and otherwise no blemishes. He struck out three, hadn't walked any, and then after three and two-thirds, he, he injured his back. He had a herniated disc. He was going to miss a week. So that really sucked uh, for a couple of reasons. You know, I, I mean, my bullpen, Adams, wasn't totally available because he had pitched in a wild card game. Uh, same thing with Brady Corrigan, I believe it was, had pitched in a wild card game. But, you know, I tried to piece it together and just nobody did anything. I mean, my bullpen was a disaster. So, you know, your game one starter goes down hurt. He, Other than that, you know, a base hit and then a home run by Gluber Torres. He was pitching really well. Um, and then and then the offense just didn't do anything. So, you know, going into the series, I, I know I talked about on the live broadcast that injuries were an issue given that Carlson and Little, Little were out. And then Lacey goes out and isn't able to give us um, – length there that really hurts put us behind the eight ball to start the series but you know still had plenty of time to bounce back and here in game two we lost in the bottom of the ninth Adams gave up a two-run homer to Heathcox and that was after Drew Bowser had he'd come in the game as a defensive substitution after I'd pinch it for Castro in the sixth and then Bowser came up and got his first step out of the postseason in the that was the top of the eighth he hit a two-run homer to tie it which was awesome thought we were going to win it after that I was feeling good um Delgado was not good four and two I mean he was fine four and two thirds six hits three runs only four k's just not himself Hackamer pitched okay and then Adams was fine until they gave up that walk-off two-run homer. And then the next game we won, I believe this was a walk-off win, right? Yeah, bottom of the ninth, Gunnar Henderson hit a walk-off single off former Oriole, uh, Jordan Hicks. You can see we fell behind 3-1, but then uh, there was a homer by Larnack in the sixth and a home run by Nat- Matan in the sixth. So two home runs in the sixth inning to tie it and then uh, took it to Hicks in the ninth. Uh, Patino pitched well, six innings. Seven hits, only two Ks, which was a little weird. Uh, Corrigan went three perfect innings with six strikeouts. I just kept rolling with him because he was mowing people down. Obviously took him out of consideration for the following game. So then we're back. We're feeling good. And then we just got into a pitcher's duel here. The Yankees scored a run in the first inning. Uh, it was a home, solo home run by Jason Dominguez. And then we tied it in the third inning with a single by Mountcastle and Let's see, go down to the pitching. Keller was just awesome. My number four starter, six and two-thirds, five hits a run. Vasquez came in and got a lefty out. And then Hackamer and Adams, again, each gave up a run. Couldn't couldn't keep it together. And one super frustrating thing was here. How the, is it in the game log? It's probably in the game log. This is so dumb. Um, so go to the bottom of the ninth, down two runs. I get a single from Castro. Uh, Berciertis strikes out. And then Rutschman was in the game because uh, I can't remember what had happened, why Camposano was out or what. Yeah, hold on. Let me try to piece that together. Oh, I'd pinch run for Camposano in the seventh because he was in scoring position. I needed to tie the game, and I did. And so Rutschman singled tonight, first and second. I have one down. (laughs) My number three and four hitters coming up. Mountcastle hits a fly ball to center field. Caught. 
and Castro tries to tag up from second base to go to third with two down and the tying run on first base. Absolutely the dumbest base running decision in the history of Major League Baseball postseason. I mean, this it would just never happen. Like, you know, I saw the fly out and then I looked up. I think I had the TV on and I was I was waiting for the, you know, the ball to get thrown in and to skip to the next at bat. And all of a sudden I looked down and the Yankees are on the field celebrating. I could not believe it. I mean, just frustrating because I had my cleanup hitter coming up. He was the go-ahead run. I needed that game to win. And Castro makes a decision that no Major League Baseball player would ever make in that situation. Maybe in a regular season game you see a bonehead play like that. But in the playoffs, man, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that was super frustrating. You know, this I was already kind of behind the eight ball with a bunch of things, playing a, the best team in the AL, all those injuries. Uh, you know, my starters, Delgado wasn't good. Lacey got hurt. And then my guy just runs into the season ending out when I was I had a rally going. I had a rally going. So that was really irritating. Um, what else do we have going on here? Let me tell you. I fired my manager. <laughs> I fired Robin Ventura because basically... I'll show you here why. And I knew this was going to be a problem, right? I knew I knew that uh, for whatever reason, he has a poor track record when it comes to pitching staffs, his relationships with my team. You can see lower influence and bad relationships with all the pitchers. I was projected to have the best pitching staff in the American League, and I ended up having one of the worst. So, you know, my pitching coach is good. I've had a good track record on him. I still, I still trust him. But, you know, coming in, well, he we finished ninth in the AL and runs allowed in the ERA. Um, so basically, man, I don't have time for that. <laughs> Not in this sim when I haven't won a World Series yet for some reason. This is the longest I've ever gone without winning a World Series. Um, so I hired Rick Renteria, who he was with the White Sox through 2023. He won a World Series with them. Then he's been in Boston on a team that was never really supposed to be that good. But they're fine. They've overachieved. So um, Rick Renteria's in three years, $2.5 million deal. And he'll let me control the lineup still, so that's cool. Uh, and then I've simmed. I'm pretty far into the post, well, off season, I guess. I haven't gotten arbitration or anything like that yet. But just to go over the MVP, Alex Verdugo from Oriole won the NL MVP. Soto and Bellinger rounded out the top three. The AL MVP, uh, Vlad Guerrero, Gluber Torres, Dylan Carlson. I had a couple other guys get votes too. Let's see here. Where are they? Oh, yeah. Mount Castle got some second place votes, and so did Rosario. Um, Cy Young, I don't think I had anybody get votes. Oh, no. Luis Patino got a couple second place votes. Um, I did not have any guy get rookie of the year votes. Silver Slugger. Mount Castle got the Silver Slugger at first base. Carlson got the Silver Slugger in left field. And I believe I had, yeah, Brady Corrigan got 23. Uh, second place votes came in fourth place for best reliever of the year. That's pretty cool. And I don't believe I had any gold clubbers because my defense sucked this year, which is frustrating. I hate having bad defenses. Um, so that's that's kind of the, the overview of what's going on. I have some other out-of-the-park stuff I want to mess around on. I've also downloaded Franchise Hockey Manager, the out-of-the-park hockey sim. I've been messing around with that a little bit. I might post some videos of that for fun. I'm going to keep playing this sim. Honestly, Like I thought I was going to take a break after this season and not play anymore, but I'm so irritated with how that season ended <laughs> with the, the bad luck with who got injured and then that base running error that... And, you know, also annoyed that I haven't won a championship yet. And, you know, like I've said before, I kind of put some rules in place on myself to make the game harder because I've played it for so long. I'm not going to totally ignore those rules, but I've definitely been loosening up the rules with trading as I go on. And I'm kind of thinking that I want to, you know, I'll keep it realistic, but I'm going to let myself continue to make like one or two big trades a year. Um, and so I've got a bunch of guys in arbitration. Asa Lacey, Nick Matanz due for a big raise, Gunnar Henderson, Jason Rosario, Trevor Larnack. I am probably going to trade Larnack, to be honest. I have other guys who can do his job at DH just as well and are much cheaper, and I can trade him while he's under team control and get something for him. Uh, I won't be doing a qualifying offer to anybody. Uh, I don't know that Adams will be back. I don't know that Vasquez will be back. Cedarland, possibly. Possibly, depending on what I do. I've been looking. I probably won't do like an off-season planning episode this time just because I want to move forward with the off-season. I don't feel like waiting to do that. But I've been thinking about upgrading at second base, even though I have the best offense in the AL um, and a good fielder there. But this would be an interesting trade. Uh, Trevor Larnack and Mitch Keller, who's my number four starter, but really more like a number two starter. He's under contract for each of these guys are only contract for one more year so getting something for him now and then gerber's a really good um outfield prospect but he stalled out a bit in double a this year didn't play as well 
Um, but I would get Colt Tucker, who's one of the best second basemen in the game. He's under a crazy contract. I'll show you that in a minute. But, I mean, look at this. He's put up five to six war every season. His OPS is 120 to 130 every season. He plays a great second base. Wow, he hasn't made an all-star game? That's super strange. I mean, I was going to check to see if he'd won any gold gloves. He hasn't even made an all-star game. That's weird with those numbers. So, the, you know, he is 30, and he is about to enter a, the last four years of his deal where he's making $21 million, which is probably why the Pirates are willing to move him. He's an opt-out in two years. So he would up my payroll, which actually I forgot to mention this, but uh, and this is one of the reasons why I'd move out Larnack and then I'd have to move out Keller from bringing in Tucker. My owner was pissed that I hadn't won a World Series yet because he gave me the objective like three years ago to win one by this year. And let's see, where is it? So my budget was 190. He cut it to 182. So I was already up against my payroll cap because of all the players who are in arbitration now. So that really means I need to, you know, I'm looking to move out Larnack probably as well as Keller to bring in. I mean, I only gain about four to five million with Cole Tucker there, but I also bring in an elite second baseman. But the other thing I'm going to need to do is move out Adley Rutschman since I have Camposano now who's a starting catcher. I don't really want to trade Rutschman for the reason being that I really like having real Orioles on my team, right? I like the team building exercise of keeping similar guys year over year over year. And so, but it just hasn't worked out for Rutschman, man. And I need the, I need the space, you know, and just to kind of show you real quick, where's that? Uh, the positional starters for the squad. Yeah. I mean, I like, you know, you can see where they're all the same colors, the same guy. I like having this consistency of all these guys. You can see, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily change positions every year. So I like that, but you know, I'm kind of hesitant to bring in Cole Tucker cause it's like, it'll be like the fourth star to superstar level player I've traded for in the last two years, which again is one of the things earlier on I wasn't doing as much and I'm kind of doing it more. But to be honest, man, like I'm not winning. <laughs> the pitching in Camden Yarns is really proving to be uh, a thorn in my side. So anyways, I don't know when I'll update again, probably maybe after the off season or like maybe like a preseason preview, but I will probably not update this as frequently. Like, like I said, I'm not going to update it multiple times during the off season. Like I normally do just cause I want to do some other out of the park stuff. Um, some other videos that I'd like to do and as well as some franchise hecky manager videos. So the O's will still be around, but I might just give more, uh, updates at like, a at longer time intervals, um, in the out of the park calendar. I'll still try to update it as much as frequently in the real life calendar. Anyways, that's all for now. Um, sorry to all you O's fans out there who stuck with us through the wild card game last night. We let you down and we'll be better next year.